You know, you can get on here and look at a million videos about how to play pentatonic scales. In today's episode, we're gonna learn patterns for soloing in the pentatonic scale, next on Everything Music. When I'm talking about horizontal or vertical playing on the guitar, I'm talking about horizontally being this way and vertically really being this way, okay? So it's a position-based approach in this way, or it's a linear approach this way, meaning being able to play up the neck in position and knowing what notes you're going to so that you're able to create melodies without being locked into position-based playing. Now, position-based playing is extremely important, so we're gonna talk about that first. Okay, so let's talk about this horizontal approach. I'm gonna use a G minor pentatonic scale to start with because it's really the first available one down here that you're all familiar with. Now there's two different fingerings to use that most people use. You'll see a lot of blues players, and I will do this when I'm doing a lot of bending. I will play three, one. And I would, a lot of times I'll use my fourth finger down here just because it's, it's, it's a reach. Or you'll see other players use they're pinkies. I'm going to do both, actually. You should really be able to do both, too. So I would practice them like that and like that. Okay, so that first position, everybody knows. I'm not even going to bother going with that. Now, what do you do with that position? Well, I would take this first position here that's based off the third fret, and then you go to the next position. So we're going to basically do a G minor pentatonic scale the five positions of the pentatonic scale. It's a five note scale, so it has five positions for it. So the first position, one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Then I'm gonna go down to this next position to the sixth fret with my second finger and go, two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three. You can go two, four, two, four, or one, three, one, three which requires a position change. Doesn't matter, you should be able to do both. Two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three. Now you're gonna wanna uh, descend on these two. So the first one would be like one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. Second position. Okay, then you lead up to the third position. So you go, you go ascending and descending. Ascending, descending, second position. Position three. Well, it starts with, you can either play two, four, two, four, two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, or you can play, like I like to play, one, three, one, three, one, three, shift back, one, four, one, four, shifting back up, one, three. Okay. Okay, so then, you do all three positions. Position two. Position three. I don't know if you noticed, but I went up with one fingering, two, four, two, four, two, four, and on the way down I went three, one, three, one, three, one, because you need to be able to do both. Then you go up position four of the pentatonic scale, which is in G minor would be starting on D, one, four, one, four, one, three, one, three, two, four, one, four. Once again, you go up and down each one all the way up to here. Then you go to the, to the fifth position. Now, up here on the guitar, instead of playing two, four, because it's really awkward, I would, I would go back to one, three. One, three, one, three, shift back, so, F, G, B flat, C, D, F, like that. And I'm strictly going to use one threes on these because uh, as you get close, as the frets get closer together, you're going to want to utilize that fingering. The fourth thing, uh, using the fourth finger gets in the way. And then you're back up to position one again. Which now you have to finger at one three. One three, one three. So I'm using only one threes there. Okay, so that's covering the, the pentatonic scale using the five positions. Now, how do you practice it? Very simply, you go up and down in one position, and then you go 
up one, down the next, up one, down the next. So it'd be like this, I'll play slow. Up position one, shift, and come down, shift. Then you want to do descending. So I used every available note I could in G minor pentatonic going up the neck. I started in the lowest available position without any open strings, and I went up to the highest position, which was position two up here, starting at the uh, 18th fret. Okay, next we're going to talk about vertical playing, which means going the on the neck this way. So, to do the same thing on one string becomes a little trickier because there's a lot of position changing. So let's just take the high E string, okay? Okay, why would that be important to use for that? Well, there's a lot of players I can think of two in particular that use vertical playing a lot. One of them is Wes Montgomery and the other one's Pat Metheny. You'll notice them moving up and down the neck this way a lot. They, they don't stay in one position for long periods of time. They know how to navigate around the neck because they know the notes that they're going for and because they've practiced these things. Now an easy way to practice it where you're not just doing all those position changes, an easy way to begin practicing that is take two string combinations, okay? and then move up the neck that way. I'm gonna use the B string and E string, and I'm gonna do this uh, G minor pentatonic scale and, and show you how to do the position changes this way. So I'm gonna go. And then come down. Okay, that's on the two high strings. Then you move into the next two sets of strings and do the same thing. You do that through all groups of two strings. Next you do three string groupings. I'm gonna do the G string, B string, and E string, high E string. Then you do those in reverse order. Practice them slowly first. Three string groupings. Okay, when you get on the inner strings, let's say you're doing the two string groupings, it starts to get interesting when you're climbing up. So, let's say you take it on the A string. So I'm doing, using those inner strings there. The next thing to do to really start ingraining the patterns in your brain and not getting into predictable ones would be to create exercises in certain note groupings. You could do, I like to use odd note patterns like fives, for example, fives would sound like this. Let's say, take the first position here, and I'll start with the start here on the note B flat. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Then you go to the next position, do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and you next position. Now these groupings like this really will enable you to come up with some interesting ideas. Three notes, five notes, seven note groupings, three note groupings would be more like triplets. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's 
not that interesting. Uh, the fives, the sevens are cool, but it's just combining the patterns. And you don't have to always stay strict with the, with the pattern. You might use fives like this. <laughs> Learn the patterns of the five positions first, horizontally, going this way. Pattern one, position one, position two, three, four, five. Every scale has as many positions as there are notes. If it's a five note scale, there's five positions. If it's a six note scale, six, a seven note scale, so on. Learning them on single strings. <laughs> Then learn them on sets of two strings. Then sets of three strings, four strings, five strings, six strings. Now I'm gonna give you an example of playing over a G minor 11 chord, moving between the different positions. Well, that's all for now. Please subscribe here and at my Everything Music Facebook page if you haven't already. Also, if you'd like to get the tablature and the chord diagrams with the scale positions, check out my Patreon page where they're available at the link provided below. I'm Rick Beato.